Did I just turn mine off? I'm really pro at this. Okay. So this is I'm just gonna call you BK because that's what you go by on yeah, socials. And absolutely. Let's call you BK. Um, you're not a bike builder, but you can build bikes. Yeah. Because your profession is you build the airplanes. Yeah, aircraft mechanic for the last 15, 16 ish years. Yeah, so these are pretty simple. Yeah, a lot more enjoyable to build. Yeah. I can just kind of zone out and keep moving forward. And which which one of the three, because you guys don't know this, there's a bunch of little bikes around for his sons. Yeah. Um, that, that I would say those are the most in depth ones yeah. that you have. Yeah, those are definitely the most maintenance. I'll just go grab one. This one was a full frame up, stripped it down, powder coated it, full so, top and bottom engine rebuild, everything. So this is a 2014. What we call a box bike. Yeah. Um, I picked it up. The clutch was locked up. The clutch basket was coming apart. And so... Um, it, did you, was it even in this sh general shape when you got it, or was it literally a piece of it? Yeah. It was together, but I... Gotcha. Yeah. Like it wasn't the, even blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think um, this is probably your most involved build then. Yes. Yes. This is by far the most involved one. Yeah. That's, um, which is wild, because it's sittery. I mean, this thing has... What, what do you call it? Not launch control, but... Um, oh, man. I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> yeah, same here. Torque putter downers. <laughs> This thing's got like a launch control device. Launch, yes, that's exactly what it's called. It's got like a trick kickstarter. It's got, I mean, like every part on this bike hey, is, I, is I had to at build least it. clean. I had to build it from the ground up, so all of the little bits and pieces. Um, yeah. The, 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 the important stuff you want to replace with OEM parts, but if it's on the outside of the bike and it's got to be replaced anyway, you might as well just buy something that the kid likes and looks cool. Yeah. If you can make the, that's one of the, one of the tricks to getting a kid that wants to ride all the time. Help him love his bike. Yeah. You know? No joke. <laughs> because I mean, loving the bike is, is really like 90%. Of it. Uh, yeah. And, and have him, and if you're thinking about building a bike for the kid, um, have, them pick. have them pick out their parts that they want. I mean, obviously you want to talk them out of bad decisions, but. Um, oh yeah, it has a triangle. If he if he wants a pink bike and that's gonna that's gonna make him want to put put seat time down, then build a pink bike. Get over it. Yeah, I mean, I don't have that problem yet, but really, really, that does like it just matters so little. That yeah. yeah, and I think the fact that you know he's got his kit and all that stuff and it makes him feel cool. Yeah, yeah. It's really all that matters. So apart from the kids' bikes, what would be your most in depth? Is it the 150 or the 500? Oh, the, the Ninja, ninja. I think. The Ninja. <laughs> the ninja. Um, so in 2016, I was T-boned on it, and it cracked uh, the lower and upper case halves. So initially, my oldest at the time was two or three, and uh, it was <laughs> in my backyard in the shed, and. Um, we, winters in Michigan can be real boring if you're not really super into winter sports. Yeah. So the plan, <clears throat> just to give me and my oldest son something to do, I had a newborn in the house, so the better I could keep him out of the house was best. So I, I actually pushed the Ninja through like probably a foot of snow, a good hundred yards, and I got it in the garage. And the plan initially was, well, this is trash. And... Um, I'm just going to strip it down with my two-year-old, and in the springtime, we'll take it to the scrapyard. And so him and I started that process, and then I had a me moment, and I was like, well, I wonder what it would take to get this thing running again. And all I could really come up with was case halves. Yeah, you so just got to replace them. I found or some welcome. case halves on eBay for like 80 bucks, and I was like, well... I've, I've wasted way more money than 80 bucks. So yeah. I ordered case halves and split them and started to rebuild or started to build from that point. And uh, before I knew it, I had a brand new zero time motor. So, yeah, which so, is not a small feat because I got a dirt bike <laughs> rebuilding a motor is really not a big deal. Yeah. Um, but this thing's got more valves than. Yeah. It needs. No, yeah. it's got a lot of valves. Yes. Um, so yeah, before, I think we started the build in like January and we spent the better part of winter building the motor and in the springtime, we put it back in the bike, redid the whole wiring harness. That took a little while too. 
a Japanese oh, wiring yeah, harness. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was in the shed for five years. So, so mice then, yeah. and all that fun stuff that comes with that. Every wire needs to be checked. Yeah, checked, changed, repaired. Um, and I don't know if any if anybody really gets bored and they want to feel stupid, um, look up a Japanese wiring diagram. Yeah, for I an O three ZX six double R. Even my Mazda, which is like nigh on two thousand thirteen, so it should be like modern enough for me to be like, oh I don't know. It's yeah, just things are done. They wire very differently than what we're used to. Yes, very very different. Um, but yeah, so springtime came around and Matthias and I fired it up and then I was like, well, crap, I've got a brand new engine with a running bike now. I might as well just make it look good. And so the, that one, I think the only thing that hasn't came off, I haven't personally taken off that is the subframe support. Everything else has wow, I been that would gone have been through. Relatively <laughs> easy, so you would have done that. Yeah, so the frame no. didn't get bent or anything? No, nope, when, nope. when I got T-boned, it was uh, <laughs> on this side, and actually my leg um, protected the frame. Because That's of those, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. I just realized that those are the same grip brand as what I ended up putting on the throttle. Yes. But I uh, have this one upside down. For street bikes, I love domino grips. <laughs> I realized I put the, the, the left side grip on the right side <laughs> upside down. That's funny. I had no idea until just now. Because <laughs> there were black letters, I just didn't think about it. <laughs> and then, obviously, the big monster, the big uh, elephant in the room. 500. This is my everything bike. Um, so I, I try not to get too engrossed or ingrained into one discipline in riding. I want to be not embarrassing at a little bit of everything. Um, so this is the bike that I settled on to do that. I ride back and forth to work almost daily. Um, this is my work vehicle. Uh, if I want to go out and trail bomb, this is what I do. Yeah. Um, Jake and I just raced a hair scramble on it yesterday. It's not easy. It may not be the perfect bike for it, but um, if a C rider can finish, I've done three so far and I've finished all three. So yeah. if a C rider can finish a hair scramble on this bike, an A rider, it's not going to hold back. That I really much. think with a flywheel weight, it would be a lot nicer for right. the, the slow stuff because it does yeah. stall really, really yeah. easily. Yeah, and it, that's something I've. Um, I only had issues with uphills, and once I. Once you get, I think, once you once get I the hang of, it of revving gear. it out too, yes. that there's, because it's so powerful, it's such a powerful bike that mm -hmm. be, uh, losing that fear of revving it out, Yes, because this bike does, it it'll has, stall at anything under like 3,000 RPM. Yeah. And it has so much power down low, you yeah. really like, you get, you used, get to used to lugging it and you forget that like... It's still a four stroke with a huge yeah, stroke. Yeah, it revs out to the eight to 10,000 RPM. Yeah. Um, but there, it's just so much usable power down low, you kind of just want a tractor everywhere. Yeah. And when it doesn't want to do it, it will throw you over the bars. And that's quick. normally the right answer. Like, less power, the least amount of power you can use mm -hmm. to get through the obstacle is the best. I've, I've it, learned. Just stalling is, is yeah. ass. So, because I'm a lower skill level rider, I prefer, especially if I'm riding on an MX track, I prefer to ride a gear high and keep my RPMs low. Whereas I think the, the correct way to ride this bike, and you will you would never have that flame out or stall yeah. issue, is ride yeah. in the correct yeah. gear and keep I, your RPMs where they should. I guarantee be. you, every commenter on the internet would tell you that you need to rev it higher. Yeah, I get that all the time on my three hundred. Yeah, yeah. They're like, "You're gonna follow the plugs, man. You're gonna follow the plugs." I'm, bro, I've been riding this bike for three hundred fifty hours. Yeah, I've never followed the plug. That does not happen. <laughs> Stop. Stop. You don't know what you're talking no. about. Go go back to your one twenty five. But I, I also practice a lot of technical stuff, static balance full lock figure eight turns pivot yep. turns and it, some of that is just learning the bike like yeah and when, learning, when you got yeah. on it at your farm track um i even with the tps not zero um i didn't have any of those low speed issues just because i'm used to the bike yeah, i know exactly. where the clutch needs to be uh i practice on the bike so exactly. some of the some of the the flame out installing issues is just learn the bike better every bike is a mm -hmm. little bit different no joke um, Heck, I stall a lot on any four stroke I get on. Yeah. And the, the bigger the bore of the four stroke, the easier they are to stall. Yep. At. I mean, maybe not like a V twin, but that's a whole different story. These are thumpers. Yeah. There's a lot of distance between the time it gets energy. There's yep. one, <laughs> two, three. Now we get energy. Yep. I'm used to a bike where it's like energy, energy, yep. energy. So stalling a two stroke is 
you really have to try. Yeah. But a four stroke, it, it's just something that people are like, oh, you stalled mm -hmm. it hard. It's like, no, dude, that's it's annoying, but it's just part of yeah. it. But yeah, revving it out, I think, yeah. would be the big, and, and a flywheel weight. Just yeah. because it is, it's a 450 motor that's just bigger. Yes, it's a, I, I, I know it's a bored out 450 cylinder that they, they built this out of. Yeah. I can't remember if it's bored and stroked because it, it's a 500 EXCF. Yeah. Uh, should have put that in there earlier. Um, okay. Six days edition. I won't leave that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you spent extra for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That uh, this is also the first bike I ever bought brand new off the showroom floor. Yeah. Um. So it was kind of like my uh, call it a pre midlife crisis purchase. Yeah. Um. But and then you were at least smart enough to change the six days plastic yes, out. Yes, those are up in the not, attic. Because they those wrapped. are what like three hundred dollar plastics or something yeah. like and that. Yeah. It, and it's KTM. In order to order them from KTM, they make you like. Prove ownership, like VIN number, serial number, pictures of the bike. Like they make they, they make you jump through a lot of hoops, and and even after you prove that you do have a real six days, they'll send you six days plastics when they get to it. So you yeah. might wait six months for them. Yeah, or you, you know? could you use a Cherbies or Polysport? I don't know if they have came out with plastics for the twenty fours. Yeah, yeah. Cherbies is a little late to the game. Yeah. On it. Um, like I actually really like the fitment of their stuff, mm -hmm. and it's not just because they give me a discount. Like the fitment's yeah. really good. The blue OEM plastics I changed out immediately. SKDA graphics. Um, I didn't know that they were actually Austra an Australian company, but I went through and picked it out and designed yeah. the graphics and uh, um, Cycra Pro wraparounds. I really like that they mount to my bar mounts. Yeah, mine don't do that. Instead of P-clamps on the bars. Yeah. I already have enough crap on my bars. Yeah. I'm trying to whittle that down. Um, so the fact that you're able to get bar clamps with the wraparound mount yeah. is really what drew me to that. Um, and they've been rock solid. The only issues I've had with them is bending the bar clamp bolts. Yeah, when that you happens. crash, yeah, but that's, but that's you, normal. I think that with wraparounds, you just kind of expect to bend them back yeah. uh, every time you have a big crash. Heck, I've already yeah. bent <clears throat> these. I bought these for this bike, like, what, like a month, not even a month yeah. ago, and I've already bent them, like, twice. Just yep. cause, <laughs> yeah, that's just how it is. I think that, for me, though, the, the number one thing about this bike that I love is the suspension. Yeah. Because it gives not. me hope that one day when I own this generation, <laughs> yes. whether it be a 300 or like a 350, I think probably the trick there is, so the EXCF comes stock with spring forks. Yeah. They went away from their air forks for their dual sports, and I'm not an air fork guy. Some people really love them. Yeah, mine um, are spring forks, too. Mine is... Uh, I, I, whether it's KYB, Showa, or WP. Um, Simple. Yeah, spring forks will be my go-to all the time. Um, I'm sure air forks are good, but I feel like there's just more maintenance that is involved. Yeah. And I'm not very good at remembering to do maintenance. If I change yeah. the oil, it's, it's some. I'm not. I'm. Not, I'm not a big fan of the way they feel. Like I. So I, I'm a sea rider pretty much everywhere. Unless I'm like in a fast double track section, big sand roller whoops like that, that's kind of where where I'm fastest at. Well, yeah, and this thing just wheelies no matter yes. what. Yeah. With air fork, other bikes I've ridden with air forks where like I'm at home riding, um, the middle of the stroke, I've ridden several different bikes with air forks on them. Yeah. In the middle of the stroke, I don't like how progressively Hard, more harsh they get. I see. Yeah. Like in the middle of the stroke, towards the end of the stroke, it's the it's bottoming way. Yes. It starts to do the bottoming resistance yeah. way sooner. I and I, I'm not super familiar with revalving air forks, but it's probably they they were designed for motocross, so they're yeah. just designed to case jumps. Yeah. Which <laughs> it does not we and enduro and hair scramble cross country racing. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a fair amount of bottoming out. Like right. every race, I end up with my little thing way at the bottom. Yeah. But I'm not casing jumps the same way as yeah. as a like motocross rider. Well, unless you ride the track backwards. <laughs> yeah, if you ride the track backwards, you tend to case them. But yeah. All right, I'm gonna move this little guy, All right. and we're gonna make it. Sorry. Make it the star of the show. Yeah. Because this is the exciting bike to talk about. Get this. Well, you know, for me, my big thing is always it's not the bike. Always, always, always. And nobody they nobody really listens. So 
And everyone says, no, if, you, if I had a blah, 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 brand new, blah, 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 I could do that. I'm like, no, you shouldn't. Because if you can't do it on your 150, 2003 150, you mm -hmm. can't do it. I would like, and I'm into motocross a lot just because of my boys. We watch them every week. But I would like to put this, that myth to bed. Like, put Jet Lawrence on yeah. an RMZ yeah. and go do lap times and then let him ride his factory bike and go do lap times. I would be willing to bet that the lap times aren't that different. No, I, in fact, I noticed in Supercross that the 250 guys are not that much slower than the 450 guys. There's a that should be fine. She ain't falling. Now, would Honda ever let Jet touch a RMZ? I highly doubt it. But Probably not. If he gets 30 seconds where he's not under contract obligations, it would be, yeah. it would be really fun. I don't know, line them all up. Cowie, Honda, happens, yeah. KTM, Sherco. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no joke. <laughs> Line them all up and let a guy like Jet Lawrence go do lap times on all the bikes. You know, let him get comfortable and then, you know, do some hot laps on all the different brands and just see. And it, that wouldn't that wouldn't show you, like, what one brand is better than the other. It would it would gear it more towards, like... Wow, these are all relatively similar. Yeah. Just the rider. Yep. Yeah. The generalness of that doesn't just apply to pros. Right. It Absolutely. goes all the way down to C-class riders. Like, I did not come in last place. No. Not even. <laughs> I had one incredible start, which was, no joke, the surprise of the day, without mm -hmm. question. That you was beat late. the brakes off me on a kid's bike. Yeah, so. even even I, on the video, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Like, this isn't supposed to happen. His first kick started, and I was gone, mm -hmm. and then out breaking people. Yeah. And this does not have braided brake lines. This has, no. like... This He's, is a farm bike, yeah. so... He, but, he did that on a, dr a rear drum and a squishy front. Yeah, <laughs> rear drum brake for the win. But, like, I think, obviously, I came here to go to the Meg Brap's... Meg's Brap, not Meg Brap's. Meg's Brap's Clinic. Meg's Brap Clinic. There you go. And, yeah, and you're the only guy I know that has bikes that I can borrow, and you're right. generous enough to lo loan me one. Mm -hmm. And, to his credit, I have to... Everyone needs to know this. He offered me the 500. <laughs> And I said, you know, this is an enduro clinic. I'll take the 150. Yeah. And then he's just like, you know, just keep it. And for because I had, we're gonna do the race. So I've just been putting hours on this thing. Mm -hmm. And it kind of gave me this opportunity to really hammer home that, hey, you can shred on a 2003 CRF yeah, 150F. Yes. Which I don't know. A lot of people understand that that's a really big distinction. If that said R, like if you took it in like that, the whole different machine. Yep. This is a smaller frame bike. The front wheel is 19 inches. I don't even know if the 16. R. The R might is it be still small? Liquid cooled. Oh yeah, it might be a whole different. And too. actual. You know, yeah, it's got real proper con forks. conventional forks. These but, are real old school forks. Yeah. Like they're the, how they control fluid dynamics is just drill a hole. Yeah. And if the hole's too big, then it moves too fast. Yep. If it's too small, it doesn't move fast enough. Then you can't adjust it. There's no clickers. There's none of that. It just is what it is. Um, but it's been incredible. It's, there's nothing wrong with this bike. But it is. It, it, you've bored it out to one seventy. It's got a one seventy five kit on it. Yeah. Which um, was way cheaper than I thought it was going to yeah. be. I yeah. looked that up and thought it was going to be like five hundred bucks. No. The BBR kit, so I you can you can get the Chinese kits, and a lot of people do. That's what I um, saw. Yeah, the Chinese kits are under two hundred bucks. To yeah, it was conversion. insane. Uh, most of the performance parts on the bike are from BBR. It's a little bit higher end company. I yeah. think they're US. They're Canadian. Not, I think. Are they? Yeah, because yeah. okay. they make the seven or the five hundred kit for my bike. They're North I've American. Never used. There we go. Yeah, North <laughs> American. Can't go wrong with that. <laughs> Um, I wanted to put a, a pro circuit T4 pipe on it, but I was having some finding one issues. So just kind of on a whim, I went with the big gun big Evo, gun. the big gun Evo exhaust. And Which this sounds... thing sounds like a monster coming up behind you. Yeah, you, you get really... ready for some guy on a 450 because that's what it sounds like yeah. coming up behind you. No joke. And then you let him by and yeah, nope, it's a kid. 
or it's a dude on a kid's bike. It's a grown man on a child's bike <laughs> yes. going up hills just passing people. Um, the but, cable yeah. clutch was not great, but yeah. you're used to it. It's not so heavy because it is for a 150. It's yeah, not... you can you can push that forward by hand. It's yeah. only got, I yeah, think, four, really... yeah. four springs. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's um, not terrible. I was actually very impressed that... For as hard as you were ripping this thing, you did not smoke a clutch. I was not. It didn't. Even I slip. didn't. I didn't. I specifically didn't say it out loud because I didn't want to jinx us because I couldn't get replacement clutch plates here in time to yeah. make the race. So I completely like after Matthias came out and did the enduro clinic with you, I was like, mm, I'm not even gonna say that out loud because. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, because you come out of the quarters, <laughs> you're just hammering on it. But a lot of the work I was doing was in second, third gear. Yeah. So if it wasn't high, like high gear stuff, so what? borrowed the bike for the clinic. You let me keep it for the race. But it's really for me, it's just an opportunity to, to kind of. I always tell people when they get in the sport, don't go buy an expensive thing. Yeah, don't go spend thousands of dollars. Get the mm -hmm. cheap used bike, especially yep. like an old air cooled Honda like this. Like these things, it's obviously, you can take a lot more than what it's designed. I, I've known you since we were in what fourth grade, second, second, yeah. oh yeah, second grade. And I've I've seen slash watched you break a lot of things, and this Honda survived you, so I think that's a testament. You know, I to the its only durability. thing, the only damage it took was I bent the brake lever. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I mean, my bike goes through more than that, which is wild. I didn't bend any bars. Although I do crash less now. After 300 hours That's of true. riding yeah. uh, enduro, you kind of get better. But I, I crash this a lot. It's not like I didn't right. drop this at all. Yeah, this, I mean, this thing can absolutely take take some hits. And, like, the value on one of these, if you go on Facebook Marketplace, and right now all the values are out of control. They should, yes. Bikes do not cost as much as people are saying they cost, but you have to pay them. So... If you went on the internet and you're looking on the interwebs, whatever your Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, these this would be like less than three thousand dollars. Yeah. Not this one because this one has been like actually cared for, mm -hmm. but one that runs, drives, and will get you to the trail, well onto the trails and then around the right. trails under three grand. So yeah. you could get into the sport. If in prices were realistic right now. Um, hundred thousand. Yeah, I would, I would price this bike in its stock form with a normal amount of hours on it between 900 and 1200 dollars. Yeah. And that's real um, like that's a realistic price because yeah. like let's be honest it's it's a kids bike. It, yeah. It's not like it's not a kids bike. It's an intermediate between right. an adult and a child. Yeah. So it's it's really and it's not designed for the racing kids either. Like the right. kid who's like, "Oh, I'm going from a 110 to a 125." Mm -hmm. But it's like the size of a 110. It's, yeah. I think it's slightly bigger. A little than a bigger than a 110. And 110s are being made smaller and smaller now. Yeah. Because they are like that adult pit bike slash kids woods four stroke. Yeah. You know? um, and and I'm seeing them more and more at the motocross track too. The um, 110s. The 110s. Yeah. Yeah, those are pretty. I like them a lot. I just like I really can't hammer home enough how important it is to buy a bike like this mm -hmm. when you're getting into the sport, not yeah. a bike like that. I have the audio. Now it's starting again. What in the crap? This camera is finicky, man. It has been lately. Taking a couple too many shots. Huh? I think so. I've, <laughs> it's definitely not the first uh, step on. It's like 20th crack. <laughs> So yeah, you got this bike from your friend. Um, yeah, who needed some help with some money and uh, the only thing I would do different if I was actually looking for a bike in this category, uh, this is an 03 in 2006, they started putting e-starts on. Yeah, and honestly... And they're not, the engines aren't easily swappable, otherwise yeah. I absolutely would buy some case halves from an 06 yeah. and build up a disc bike with e-start. But getting this bike to have e-start would be every bit as difficult as have, having one with upside down forks on it. Like, yeah, and one of the most annoying comments I get from motocross guys is like, well, don't be a pussy, you know, kickstart it. Like, look, yeah. shut the fuck up. Like, you <laughs> yeah. don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Anyone who says that, I'm like, you've never been on the side of a mountain trying to kickstart just... while your bike is 45 degrees yeah. and there's a cliff to your left. Yeah. But yeah, okay, Go show me how you kickstart the bike on the right when there's a cliff on your left. Yep, yeah. uh, going down, <laughs> not up. Up even, I've done both. Yeah. And, and in the race, I had a great start and 
had a quick stall, which mm. in any other bike that I've ridden, not a big deal. The problem was there was only one track up this, this steep hill climb, mm -hmm. and I go to kickstart it, and every time I kick, I'm putting my foot on the path, because the bottom of the tires are now in the path. So it's basically like, sorry, little Honda, you're going to get run over by 20 guys. Yeah. And if I try and kick it, I'm now in the way, and I can't pull the bike out of the rut, because mm -hmm. it's also on a weird uphill. So I lost 23 places because Damn. of a kickstarter. <laughs> So, yeah, oh, stop being a pussy, you just kickstarted. Whereas on this bike, okay. we've already been over the, it's a 500, it stalls. Yeah, um, you stall it, it's in your back. Most of the time, I don't even take my feet off the pegs. No. I have enough speed to roll and get the engine refired yep. and go. Yeah. It's not super often that I, I stall the bike and have to put a foot down. Yeah. You know? I think the reason I stalled it in that particular moment is because I came in with confidence. Yes. I was coming in feeling <laughs> hot. I was like, yeah, this is starts going great. So I did a little jump and came down and just the rear tire was going too fast for mm. the ground speed and just stalled it in the worst possible spot. I mean, I did not expect to do super well in the race. I mean, obviously, I want to. Yeah, that start. I, my only goal for that race was to not get lapped by you, and I almost made it. But I was like, and when we're waiting for our row to go, I'm like, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to ride with him. I, he's, he's on a, he's on a 150. There's no reason in the world I shouldn't ride with him. And then as my eyes come up, I see this red streak <laughs> to my left. And immediately all of those hopes went down a little bit. And yeah. then I, and then I almost lost the front end in turn one. Because the turn I, one had a step down. Into yeah, it, yeah. I, I saved that and I, I let a few people buy. I had to put a foot down there, otherwise I'd have went down. Um, a few people got by me there, but once we got into turn two, I was like, all right, I'm on the MX track. If I'm going to yeah. catch anybody, it's going to be now. And I passed like seven or eight people. Um, and it wasn't one of them. I wasn't one of them. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I still was quite a ways. I could see you, though. I was in so second for a long time. After turn two, you well, kind of went along the edge of the motocross track in the, in the woods a yeah. little bit. And I could see you through all that. And there was a sharp turn out of that. Yeah. And I crashed again on on the motocross track. I was going through sand. And and deep sand. Yeah. yeah. And then the, the ruts uh, were just like random. Mm -hmm. There was no there was no inside outside line. Yeah. And the, some laps I tried so the inside that's, that's line. That's the thing. When you're on a, an MX track with MX riders, lines form. Yeah. When you're on an MX track with 260 woods riders, yeah. there's no such thing as Because also lines. there were random tires hidden in the sand. Yeah. I leaned her over <laughs> and into one of the corners and caught this non-movable peg on it and just go down. And everyone's yeah, like, yeah. oh, and I'm like, I'm like mad. I'm like, don't, oh, man, it there's wasn't a, my fault. There's a buried tire in yeah. the middle of a turn. And I have yeah. this, like, these don't move. Yeah. I learned that. This this was Honda trying to like making it playing a joke on us. Really, they're like, ah, look at this will move, but you still have this immovable. I did for the first behind. time. I so you know how they had a bunch of like two and a half foot stumps cut with stickers yeah. on them. Oh yeah, my foot's hit many of those. Yeah, yeah I, for the first time, I absolutely railed one of those, like going pretty fast yeah. too, and it actually like spun the bike around. And I don't know how I saved it. But the bike went totally sideways, and I just turned the bars and gassed it. And this is single track. This is not. Yeah. I, I did not. I don't know how I had the like taking my bike and moving it forty five degrees. Both tires are off the trail in the woods. It was like a trick you meant to do, basically. <laughs> hey, yeah. Yeah. I I smoked that thing going super fast. The the peg did not do what it was supposed to do because it it spun the whole bike forty five degrees. I turned the bars and just laid on the throttle. And luckily, I was in second, and yeah. it self-corrected <laughs> but uh i was i was i was in a pretty good flow i was in a good rhythm my arms my my cardio was coming back i was feeling good yeah and then that near that like that if i'd have went off the bike that would have been bad yeah. so then after that my adrenaline shot way up i started riding way tighter like yeah i lost the good flow that i had and that that took another whole lap before I got like comfortable and in a good rhythm again. Uh, for sure, it's weird how much a little thing like that can uh, yeah. keep out of it. <laughs> yep. I, like, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say like the that track because it was in sand. The, there were whoops, and they weren't really whoops, they were rollers. Mm -hmm. And they started out like maybe like that, like okay, yeah. feet, you know. And by the end of the day, because there's C-class riders galore, and they're all like, wah, 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 oh, just yeah. digging holes. They grow. <laughs> and as the, as the rollers grow, 
the smaller bike gets smaller. Yes. So at the end of the day, I'm feeling really tired in a way that I'm not used to because the bike is a little shorter. So like, yes, I definitely think that this is an incredible bike, mm -hmm. but there is, the, I think I found its limit. Yeah. Oh Sunday. yeah, for sure. And, and its limit wasn't like, oh, took, like people will say, oh, you're gonna have a hard time on the start. No. <laughs> Smoke the start. Oh, you're gonna have a hard time on the hill climbs. Nope. Smoked everybody on the hill climbs. Make most of my passes there. Oh, you're gonna have a hard time in the sand. Whoops. Yeah, but only because everybody else was digging them out. Yeah. So, I think the limits I find are just the general sizing of it. Yeah. It's just not made for a grown person. So I, I'm you're you're balancing more forward backwards. Yeah. Um, I was having an issue with my my finger has been coming out of socket, so I had taped. That, no, that wasn't the problem. There was tape there, and the tape was not allowing me to roll the throttle all the way back. So overall race, not like not a good or great race for me, but it was fun. But the bike was not the problem, is what I want. Mm -hmm. I, I can't hammer that home enough. Like People are always going to blame, oh, you're going to have this problem, or you're going to yeah. have that problem. And every single one of the problems I was told online, mm -hmm. by all you, yeah. every single one of those problems, this bike absolutely excelled at. So for a new rider coming into the sport, like... They're gonna hear so much from the veteran riders. From they're gonna hear so much like yeah, equipment, 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 equipment. And like I'm a mechanic first. I'm I'm never been a racer first. So like my bikes have a lot of trinkets or or equipment on them because when I'm bored, I like to work on bikes. Um, when there's no bike work in my garage for me to do, I get very stir crazy very fast. That's like my that's where I just shut my brain off and relax. That's where I recover from being a dad, being a mechanic, yeah. being a husband. Like, all I get to take all the other hats off and just build a bike. And, and that's when you buy another P Dub or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> buy another little two stroke. I can't wait to retire from those bikes. Next year, Malachi will be on a mini. Yeah. And those P Dubs are either going to get put under get the house sold in long term storage or we're going to sell both of them and yeah, get do something, something else. Fun. Yeah. But yeah, so it, it, I feel like that's one of the hardest things is when you're getting new to the sport is yeah. you're going to hear so much of, oh, we'll get a real bike mm -hmm. or oh, get a blah, blah, blah. And I know I like my platform's tiny, yeah. like maybe 300 people will yeah. watch this. But for those 300 people, this is fine. This yeah. is enough. Like, yes, I found its limitations. Yes, when I was pushing really hard, I would run into situations where I was having a magical moment and then that magical moment would turn into, oh crap, this isn't doing what I want it to do. Yeah. But you're not supposed to be doing what I was doing on this bike. But you could get to where I'm at on this bike. Absolutely. Is what I'm trying to say. You could yeah. get very far on a if, farm If you're bike. looking to get into the sport, I would say get a bike like this that can do a little bit of everything. Get your balance. The more specialized bike you get, like... Yeah. Um, yeah, the, you the more yourself. locked in you are to yeah. that specialty, especially a new rider coming in, yeah. they might not know whether they enjoy single track, whether yeah. they enjoy MX, whether they enjoy mm -hmm. dual sport, you know, true dual sport. Yeah. Um, so get a bike that can do a little bit of everything. Yeah. And then if you find a, a specialized, uh, a niche, something that you really, yeah. the, the riding that you really like to do, then you can start pouring money into yep. that thing because like Jake's Enduro bike is not going to perform the way he, like if he gets on a real MX bike, a bike that's been built for MX, yeah. he's going to be a faster rider on an MX track, but give him that bike and send him back to Mexico with it to do the riding that he likes to do. Yeah. It's going to limit him. Huge, Doing a double hugely. blip. On a YZ250? Scary. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't see how people do it. There are some people that, that hard enduro YZs, and I'm just like, how? How yeah. do you do that? That thing is an absolute monster. It's an animal. Yes. That's <laughs> just a serial killer underneath you. And I loved it. It was a great bike, but it had no intention of letting me live. No. It was more, it had a, a, so, such a violent nature to it. Yeah. That, and and that, was, bike a, that was really a 2019 mellow. YZ. Yeah. So, like, if you get on a 04, it's going to feel very similar. You know? Yeah. Um, they, the, the YZs have, are like p -dubs. They have not changed much over the years. Yeah. Um, little things here or there, but I mean, a lot of people, to, they, they heavily modify a YZ um, to, to be a good easy. woods bike. Yeah. The e-start kit for a YZ, I think, is from Pantheon They're Technologies. They're so expensive. Like $1,800. And it's just a big motor dangling off the side. Yes. Like, 
yeah. which for me I would immediately break yeah, it on the rock. Yeah, and you know, you eighteen hundred dollars for the e start kit. You're gonna be putting between one and two thousand dollars into the suspension to make it a capable woods bike. Yeah, um, and then all the comfort things, you know, making the bike fit you, seat bars, grips, exhaust, like how making the bike how you want yeah. it. Because um, I almost went that route. Like yeah. my next bike, I was looking at a YZ250 because I yeah. love the sound of YZs. Yes. But I rode your brother-in-law's bike and was like, oh, this is an incredible bike. This might be one of the best two strokes ever made. Yeah. For this. Yes. But, yeah, the, that's the idea of being able to control, not just do a wheelie, because it's, it's easy mm -hmm. when a wheelie, yeah, I know, you just plop a clutch. I get it. Thank you, internet, for telling me I do a wheelie every time I do one. I know. I know how to freaking do a wheelie. But on that bike, doing a wheelie, dropping the front tire on a log at the right spot, and then doing another wheelie into it and getting lift off the rear tire, it's, how the hell do you control a YZ and all that? It's, it's either know. on or off. You're either sending it or yeah. you're not sending it. And so then when you do people, send it, yeah. it has a second send. Yes. Yeah, That's you, what got me. You, on the 250, there's very much like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm in the power band. I'm in the power band. And nope. then you get jerked back on your seat six inches. Yeah. <laughs> like, because I, I lean forward. I hit, I hit the gas. I lean forward, good body position. And on my 300... Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's it, all the way through the rev range until I shift. On the YZ, it's like, no, you need to lean forward again at a certain moment when you hear the thing happen. When you, once you start to hear it get on the pipe, you better be ready for it. Like, and I'm, I've and watched, I've watched people loop 250s out that aren't familiar with a 250 easily, yeah. in like third gear. They're already screaming through first, second, and third. Yeah. They get into third gear and they get back a little too far and they loop it out in third because they're not yeah. ready for that power band. Like, part of me still wants a YZ. Yeah. But then the rational part's like, dude, what what are you doing? Yeah. No, I would love to do, like I did on Matthias's race bike, I would love to do uh, a frame-up build on a, on a YZ. And even if it was just like a giveaway bike, like that that would be a blast. But yeah, I'm not in that season of life They're right monsters. now. <laughs> I, would, I will say, I will keep this thought keeps popping in my head, like my first bike for off-road was a 2004 KTM 950 adventure yeah. bike. Yeah. And I thought that that was like the bee's knees because, oh, I come from the street bike where 600 is a baby bike. Yeah. Like 660, 650, those are, like, those are baby bikes. So I'm like, oh, 950, I'll, it'll be good. That's like the one bit of advice if you never off-road it in your life. And you maybe you have experience on-road, maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. Don't buy a big bike. Yeah. There are there are levels to add to Cause that. Because the 500 in our world is an enormous motorcycle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I compared it, I thought the 300 and the 500 were the same height. All of the other 300s were about two and a half inches lower than mine. Oh, really? That would make a huge difference. Yeah, that, that would make a big difference. <laughs> um, that being said, though, uh, there are different levels of off-road, too. Yes. There are, you know, 50-inch trails or, or two-track, double-track trails that the his 950 would be an absolute monster and they are it is on a gravel road yep. you are it's like a cadillac yeah bdr roads um rally racing yep that's the bike yeah and euro racing that is not the bike because yep. you're going to use it as a surfboard going down the mountain yeah so i i guess there are like little uh subcategories so like off-road encompasses a lot of stuff. several different bikes yeah. But I will say though, even in rally racing, I have I've taken my 300 rally racing and mm -hmm. I won. So if you get a smaller bike, yeah. like a 150 that yeah. you know is going to be reliable, and you might not go win races, right. but you're racing. Yeah, and and pay attention to the fun factor too. Like that's a really the, the age old saying. Um, smiles per dollar, right? Yeah, smiles per dollar, and then it's you're always, always, always going to have more fun race or or riding a small bike fast than a big bike slow yeah the always <laughs> yeah like i love the the 500 but the smile per dollar is uh, not even remotely close yes. to this just <laughs> because was, the valley the cost is so different yeah it's, i was just telling you earlier that like i don't ride this bike very often but when i do oh, i can't package i can't get off it for two hours <laughs> i don't really really have a point um I came here for the clinic and then mm -hmm. I got this bike, but it's just, it really bothers me because I, I, I'm not, I'm not a pro. Right. Um, I'm not going to go. I'm, and if I was a pro, you should not trust me. If I was a <laughs> professional rider, I would be telling you that whoever I ride for makes the best bikes. 
Right. Like Jet Lawrence rides for Honda. Yep. So of course, when he talks about the best motorcycle, he's going to talk about a Honda. Manny Len Bickler is going to say the best motorcycle is a KTM. Mm -hmm. I'm not a pro rider, and I'm not. I'm not good. I don't give two craps what you buy. I, yeah. I'm, my next bike might be a Sherco. My next yep. bike might be a Beta or a KTM. I was considering YZs until I realized that I am not that crazy. You're going you're gonna to put quite a bit into that motor to make it what you want. Yeah. So it, it's better to start. But I just think for the beginner rider, because that's the majority of people, yeah. they're going to be told so much crap. And they're going to go mm -hmm. and they're going to think, oh, this is a professional rider. I need to ride what he rides. Yeah. So they're going to go buy a 450 and they'll be like, oh, I got, I've ha actually had someone say to me, I got a 450 because I wanted a fast bike. And I mean, I don't, You're there's gonna, no other way to say, I don't know what I'm talking about yeah. other than that. That's the yeah, fastest no, bike. Number one thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> buy a small bike. And if you can make a small bike fast, that means you are fast, not the bike. And you I, can't, a I slow wrote, rider can't make a, a big bike I, fast. Absolutely. I can't stress enough, like, I really want the point of my whole month here, once I realized I was going to spend a lot of time on this, I wanted to just hammer it home, and I don't think it worked. I really don't think people mm -hmm. on the internet, they saw this and they thought, oh, this guy's learning how to ride a bike. It's like, no, I'm trying to say that even a guy mm -hmm. who's pretty competent, who wins races, will get on this little piece yeah. of shit bike and be able to just rip it. Yeah. Well, the vast majority of the internet is watching 30 seconds of a video and their opinions already made. Yeah, at, but they'll, the problem is they'll watch someone like Jet Lawrence and yeah, then yeah. swipe up or left or whatever the fuck they do mm -hmm. to my video and they're like, this guy sucks. And it's like, no, you don't realize you're yeah. watching a Formula One driver and then you're watching somebody who's at a track day. Like, yeah. of course I'm not freaking this is good as Jet Lawrence yeah. at anything yeah. ever. Like that's never yeah. going to be the, the vast case. majority of people have seen a bunch of 120 foot jumps on YouTube. Yeah, but when you see what in person on a screen, yeah, and they're not like doing the math in their head. Like, yeah, a basketball court is 90 feet. Yeah, and when you like when you're when you see it in person, it's huge. And you, you like I, I've been to the court or to the court. I've been to the track with new people. And they're seeing guys clear these huge tabletops or these huge triples. And they're like, man, that jump is huge. And in the back of my head, I'm thinking like That's not, 60 feet. Yeah. You like know? the jumps <laughs> at, in that, at the Alpina track are not big jumps. No, even to my standards. No, that back tabletop is 55 feet. Yeah. Even to my, <laughs> I'm not an motocross rider, but even the, mm -hmm. the tabletops at my abandoned track are still like double yeah. the length of that, the, yeah, the, the main the, tabletop. The, the long tabletop is, is 55 feet. Yeah. That's, you're still jumping half a basketball. And that court. isn't even close to what the pro riders are doing. Yeah. So no, you are not going to do that. Yeah. So you, you, I guess I don't like, care if you're on a 450 yeah. you, or you get kind of numb watching like the Axel Hodges videos where he's sending these 140 foot, yeah. 160 foot jumps, and it's like, you know, you forget like and yeah. the top, the very top of the tail on a 747 is 60 feet. I think it's 66 feet tall. Yeah, and these guys are clearing the tail of a 747, yeah. the fin. The rudder, the big thing on the back, the tall part. <laughs> yeah. They're clearing that. Every time. With ease. Yeah. Like with 30 feet to spare. You can't <laughs> land, if you don't land on the bike, you're dead. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I like the seat. You like the seat? I wish the seat were sticky though. Yeah. But you know what? You get, this thing really grabs you and pulls you in. Yeah. Show me good, good attack position. Attack position, bud. That's not a good attack position. What are you doing? Show me your attack position. Elbows up. Show me your good. Straight back. Butt up. There you go. Knees in. Give me a race face. That's a good race face. Nobody can see it, but it's a good one. I like it. This little dude just like doing burnouts all day every day. Yeah. Is it burnouts that you're doing to kill your rear tire or is it slides? Slides. You like slides? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go Enduro! Alright, now go Enduro! <laughs> I would have laughed really hard if he looped out. 